My next guest admits to subjecting his ex-wife to years of abuse, both physical and verbal. But he says he has since turned his life around. Gerald Chambers is with me now. Gerald, thank you so much for being here. Sure. Um, I know that you, you say it started when you were a child and you yourself were abused. Yes. And so some people might say, okay, so you'd be extra keen not to do that to anybody in your life. But the truth is abuse is a cycle that repeats itself. Yeah. Was it mostly verbal in the beginning? Uh, yeah, and, and dishonesty. Just being dishonest and verbally abusive, yelling and screaming. A lot of the stuff that I saw in childhood, you know, you're, you're only as good in relationships as the relationships you've been in. And so as a child, I, I was exposed to a lot of fighting, hollering and screaming, and, and I was hit myself. Were you, were you physically abusive towards your wife and your children both? Um, I, was phys I was physically abusive toward my wife, not so much physically abusive toward the children, although I did practice corporal punishment for a while, which and I consider a form of abuse now. Yeah. And then there came a time in January of 1995, yeah. which was your low point and your aha moment. Can you tell us what happened? Um, I, I arranged to, my wife had been out of town, I arranged, and I had the children, and I arranged to take the children back to her. And I was, she had moved out, and I was still in a stage of trying to control her and um, mad at her. And I had been um, just, just basically trying to still run her life. And I arranged to take the children back to her, at which time I assaulted her in her own house. You assaulted her? Yeah. And she was hospitalized? Well, she went to the hospital. And that was it. I mean, you were the exception to the rule where you, she, she chose not to prosecute you, which was a lifesaver for you. But how did you manage to, to turn things around to the point where you're now a, a family and, and marriage counselor? Yeah, well, uh, one of the things is that um, there are a lot of different types of batterers. I'm not an antisocial batterer. I'm not a criminal. I grew up and I learned some behavior that I didn't really like. I have empathy. I didn't like my behavior. Um, I felt bad about it. And um, f plus, I was desperate. I thought I was going to jail. I thought I was going to get prosecuted. You know, um, re for, the, for some of you, you'll remember uh, Patty Hearst married St. Hugh after he uh, uh, kidnapped her and tortured her. So the DA picks it up now. They don't wait for the, the yeah. uh, partner to come in and say, I've been abused. They look at the police report and, they, and they'll prosecute. Okay. So I thought I was going to be prosecuted. And that gave me what I call the gift of desperation. And you changed everything. I mean, everything. I, well, over time. I want to I tell the audience, we, with us as well as psychotherapist Susan Weitzman, she's an expert on domestic violence and author of the book, Not to People Like Us, Hidden Abuse and Upscale Marriages. Doctor... You know there are women watching this right now who, to whom this is happening. What do they need to know? I want to go back to a few points from the earlier segments as well. The women isolate themselves. It isn't so much that the partner is doing it because there's so much shame and they're disbelieved, so it's very hard to come out. What I would say is to not doubt that inner voice that's telling you something is wrong, even if you don't get it validated outside. For people who are significant others, I think it's the, like domestic terrorism. If you see something, say something. Mm -hmm. Because I think that external validation is so important for upper educated, upper income women because they think it's only happening to them. Mm -hmm. The quote about the five acre lot is what I have always said because they think it's only happening to them. In, in terms of the men and Gerald's situation, I don't think he's typical. Because in the, in, in the population I've been looking at for all these many years, the men have learned to be entitled. They are entitled. There's a level of narcissism. They feel above the law. Many of them are above the law. And so it is important that the women do speak out, do get you know, evidence, and do press yes. charges. Susan, thank you. Thank you, Al Gerald. You as well. I want to thank all of our guests for sharing their stories. We'll be right back. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.